going on guys i am back it is november 7th we've got a huge tuesday slate what do we have one two three four five six Ten games, which is something I should have counted uh, ten seconds ago before I started this video. But anyway, pretty big slate, a uh, lot of fun games, um, not a ton of lower end value popping up yet. So it's going to be interesting to see if any uh, major injury news comes out. Um, I'm going to try to work my way through this as quick as I can. I know I get a little rambly, and ten games is going to be a long time. So I'm going to try to stick to the games where I see the the highest upsides for people and i'm gonna probably ignore a couple of these teams a couple of these games in general so taking a look at the implied lines for right now um right off the bat the nuggets are in the best spot 121 implied total um brooklyn even at 109 75 or you know 110 rounded up that's going to be a game where i'm going to be uh pretty focused um the wizards look great the Cavs are the Cavs, but uh, I think the Wizards are in a good spot, even though that is a 10-point line. Same for the Nuggets, 11-point line right now. Um, I'll get all the way down to probably like Oklahoma City is probably like my cutoff line of where I'm actively looking for people. And then everybody down here in the Hornets, Jazz, Raptors, Knicks, you know, Spurs, Blazers area. If I end up with people from there, I'm not upset about it. But I don't see any huge, like, automatic plays coming out of most of those spots. I mean, most people are going to say Gobert is probably one of them, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, my, my main focus is going to be here in that dark, dark green section, or bright green, whatever. Um, but the first team up on my list is Cleveland, so we'll take a look there to start. And it's to me, it's basically, do you want to take LeBron James or not? Um, he's 11-3 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK. Um, I, I get it. Like, he's in a great spot. You know, Milwaukee's defense isn't any great shakes. Um, I totally would understand wanting to fire up LeBron. You know, he's playing crazy minutes. He put out the, the fist meme on Instagram, so you know he means business. So, yeah, uh, I, I see no issue with rostering LeBron tonight. Um, from Other than that, I mean, you're taking bets on on the mid-tier. If you want to go after someone like, you know, Rose or Wade or Corver or Crowder, I, I can't. I don't, I don't like it. Even though they are the second highest implied total team, um, it's just a lot of not good guys, and nobody's really playing the right sort of minute breakdown. You know, Kevin Love's at 7,000, which seems great, but, you know, he played 18 minutes last night, or two nights ago. It's a little dinged up. You know, he played 27 the night before. I'm, that's just, there's too much risk involved. So, it's to me, it's either Braun or you're not anywhere near Cleveland. Now, Milwaukee, on the other hand, proud owners of... Eric Bledsoe, as of like an hour ago, which is, in my opinion, a great deal for the Bucks. Uh, you know, lottery protected first, a second rounder, and then, you know, swapping out Monroe's salary is, is more than okay. I need to rebuild these pivot tables. Nothing's in order. Um, so, uh, we wouldn't expect um, Bledsoe to be playing tonight, but that's going to be an interesting weapon. It's going to be interesting to see how that impacts, like, Malcolm Brogdon's price. I'd imagine he's going to immediately become not rosterable. Um, and it's going to be weird to see how all that money plays out. But anyway, to the Bucks, I think Giannis is in a great spot. Uh, Cleveland's defense is a dumpster fire. No one is good. Unless LeBron has some sort of weird... Like, I'm going to guard Giannis for 42 minutes in, like, the most aggressive way possible game since he's a cyborg. That's fine. Um, but otherwise, Giannis should have a field day with the Cavs and their atrocious, atrocious defense. So fire up Giannis. If you're making the choice between the two, whether you want to go Giannis or Braun, um, 
I would feel safer with Giannis. I wouldn't be surprised if Braun did one of those crazy Braun games. But I think Giannis is the safer play of the two. He's just he's more likely to impact the game across the board. He's got a, you know more help around him in a way. Um, other than that, for Milwaukee, we'll take a look at their recent breakdown and see if anything stands out. Somebody asked, uh, I think in the YouTube comments, but it might have been on um, Twitter or on the Reddit DFS site, you know, where am I getting this information? Um, it's just coming from my, my box score database. Um, I scrape basketball reference every morning for all of the box score stats from the night before. So I just export um, that information into a table of just the player name, the date, uh, the minutes, and whatever their FanDuel and DK scores are. Um, and I just put that together in a pivot table so I could look at it a little bit easier. But it's all out there. If you go to Basketball References website, um, they have a section on the website called Frivolties. And one of those is a daily leaders page. And that daily leaders page is just going to be every single person that played a single second um, in the game in, in any game that you know the day before or whatever day you particularly want to look for and it has all the box score stats uh, completely drawn out so there's nothing to stop anybody from just grabbing that every morning it would take five seconds to paste that into an excel sheet and uh, keep that going every night so if you're ever trying to recreate this it's all out on basketball reference um, if you want to try to find it i could put a link to that in the in the notes section after the podcast podcast youtube video whatever this is called um Man, Middleton, those are two good games out of Middleton in the past two. Although, if he's playing 40 minutes, that's a little scary. You don't want to rely on that. He needs 37.5 to get to 5x. I don't mind that. So I think I think Middleton is definitely in play. And then... Don't ask for my opinion on John Henson. 27, 27, 39. The only night that I rostered him, the night that he put up 13.8. So, I don't know. I, I mean, it's not as if Cleveland has anything resembling talented big men. Um, so you would think that he was in a pretty good spot. But I'm not the best barometer for John Henson. So uh, use him at your own peril. It's a good spot, though. Um, so I would say Giannis for sure, Middleton for sure. And then um, if you've got a better feel for Henson than I do, I would go for it. Um, Pacers and Pelicans, that's another game with a high implied total for both teams. Um, so I do want to take a look at them. Now, if anybody's been following all of the projections that I've been putting out, um, from the beginning of the year been pretty heavy on the the way that it likes guys on Indiana um, Oladipo for sure Thad Young for sure these are guys that just grayed out really well for me um, and I, I don't know if it's just the pricing on FanDuel that's doing it where you know Oladipo is $700 cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK like that's just it makes Oladipo so much more in play. He needs 36 and a half to hit 5x. You know, he's good for 33 here, 35. Two games in the 20s aren't good, but he's got some real upside to get it into the to mid 40s. And it that they're going to be playing up in pace. I think this is like a really good spot for Oladipo. Um, the same thing I think could be said for Thad Young. Um, no TJ Leaf, so Thad's going to be able to play as many minutes as he wants. Not that he doesn't normally, but he's played 36, 38, and 38 in his last three. Um, so I think he's going to be good for, you know, at the minimum 34 minutes. And if that's the case, he only needs 30 to get to 5x. He's going to be in that area. And if you're lucky, he pops one of these 44 burgers. But I think both of them, both Thad and Oladipo, are are good looks for for this particular game, especially because it's not as if um, 
Indiana is super deep, I would imagine they're going to want Thad Young on the court as much as they can to deal with, you know, the the boogie and AD guys. You know, he's a guy that I would imagine is going to get his full fill today. Um, I'm not on Miles Turner until I see his minutes come up a little bit higher. He's played 24 in both. I've got him projected for 28 tonight, but we'll see. Um, but that's that's a stay away from me. Um, other than that, I can see a case for Darren Collison. Um, that's probably not my play. I used him fairly recently. When was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he put up 11.9. Not the night where he put up 39. So, much like uh, these other guys. I don't have a barometer on Darren Collison either, so we'll see. Oladipo, Thad Young, both in play for me. Um, I, I probably wouldn't roster Oladipo on DK. He's a little too expensive for me there. With 10 games, you'll find plenty of other options. Now, Pels. Um, I mean, my numbers are going to continue to love Drew Holiday. Uh, he's been okay as a fantasy guy this year. Um, it's just so hard when you have AD and Boogie playing the way that they are. Um, I like AD a lot tonight. I like Cousins tonight as well. I I don't see any issue with grabbing either one of those guys. Um, obviously, you're paying up a large amount of money, but I don't see what the Pelican or what the Pacers really have in terms of stopping them from doing anything. I mean, they're not exactly going to run out Al Jefferson to put either of these guys on lockdown. I mean, he's they'll, they'll play him right off the floor. So they're going to have to rely on Miles Turner being healthy enough to go. Um, Sabonis is going to struggle with these guys. He's just not ready to try to match up with, you know, two of the 10 best players in the league, If you like if we're being honest. I mean, Boogie's been out of his mind so far this year. So feel free to fire up Boogie or AD, although I'm, it, I'm, it's not like I'm telling you guys something that you don't already know. Play really good people. Shocked. Um, Wizards and Mavs. I'm only going to take a look at the Wizards because the Mavs are uh, trash. I want to say that they're pretty low on the implied total list. Yeah, they're down here. Uh, 101.5. Um, there's, there's no interesting news coming out for them. So... If they had something where someone was out, you know, Harrison Barnes or something along those lines, who, by the way, just from looking before, I do have Harrison Barnes in my placeholder right now. Um, he was the last guy left after I filled in my lineup. So I don't expect to end up with Harrison Barnes in that regard, but he's in play at least. Um, but you don't want more than one guy from the Mavs in this scenario. Um, I'm not touching Wall tonight. Even though the Wiz have a great implied total, it's third highest on the slate right now. Um, Wall coming back after missing a game, they're 10.5 point favorites. I just don't like it. Um, and I don't particularly like Beal, although I don't mind rostering him. Um, I just see the, the clear value as Gortat tonight. Um, Dallas isn't exactly locking anything down on defense, especially at the bigs position. I mean, Gortat should be able to do whatever he wants if Dirk is guarding him. And since they insist on only playing Nerlens Noel like 18 minutes a game, who's by far the probably the best defender on their team, uh, that plays right into Gortat's hands. So... I really like Gortat tonight, um, especially at 5,600. It allows you some flexibility to grab guys 
like Westbrook, Giannis, Braun, AD. There's a lot of high dollar guys at positions other than center. So by saying that, I do have Gortat in my placeholder right now. That does get me off of Boogie. Um, but I think this is just a, a spot with too much value. Um, he's just steady. 31, 33. I know that 22 is a little low. 30, 25, 24. Like he's going to get into the mid 20s to um, to 30 range, and I, I can't see that being a struggle for him. So Gortat's one of the plays that I like more than most tonight. Uh, like I said, I'm going to ignore Dallas just for time purposes. Knicks and Hornets. Um, I'm, I'm not going to touch on either. Um, Feel free to run out Porzingis if you want. He's awesome and been killing it all year. Uh, no reason to not fire him up if you want. But other than that, there's nothing interesting between the Knicks and Hornets. Those are guys you're going to fill in with. If you see injury news there, it's a great place to focus. But otherwise, it's not necessary. Hop to Toronto, although I don't really have much to say here. Um... I'm not really sure how they're working out some of these rotations. Jonas has been playing a really weird amount of minutes. And I, I don't know what to make of it. He played 19 two nights ago, 21 and 14 in the three games that he's had since he was back. Um, if he's not going to be playing big minutes, he's, you obviously don't want to be anywhere near him. Um, Siakam has been getting... like. 18-ish minutes, so that he's not really on the board unless he's getting more minutes. Uh, Serge Ibaka's minutes have been weird. He played 18 a couple nights ago, 29, 27. Um, I've only got him at 26 tonight just because it seems like they're shying away from it. I don't really get it. But it, it takes all of these guys completely out of play to the point where Unless there's an injury, you're not really touching anything on Toronto outside of Lowry and DeRozan, which shouldn't be shocking. Um, I think Lowry's in a pretty good spot. He might have some. He might be a little pissy about getting the gate uh, two nights ago. So the Bulls are trash, as we all know. Um, the Raptors have a 105.75 implied total. Uh, they're 11 point favorites, which is a little scary. The Bulls are obviously at the bottom, as they will largely be forever, because their offense is just not very good. Um, so if you want to fire something up from the Raptors game, I think Lowry is in the best spot. 7,500. He hasn't been playing super well um, for the year, but I think the Bulls are probably pretty good medicine if you're not feeling the best in your game. I think they'll make you feel a little bit better by the time you leave. And then for the Bulls, um, there's nothing to look at. Uh, feel free to look, roster Markinen. I have him in my placeholder right now. Um, he's like the only thing that's worth watching. Uh, Bobby Portis is supposed to come back, so it'd be cool if someone punched him in the face just as redemption, but I doubt that'll happen. It would be cool if Miritich came in like it was a wrestling match and like cracked him with a chair or did some weird shit to him, but that's probably not going to happen. So we'll just skip over that. Spurs clips. Um, I don't have much to say on the Spurs. Uh, what's their implied total at? Implied totals at 103. I don't remember seeing any Spurs news. I did project Manu to be back. Um, you know, if you uh, you can talk yourself into Pow probably, um, or or Aldridge, but I'm I'm not on anything in the Spurs game, and I I doubt that I will be. Now I will hop over to the Clippers. Um, I would have expected them to be more interesting, but they're not. Um, we're not going to have Gallinari in the game, so. Right now, I've got Wesley Johnson projected for 32 minutes. In those 32 minutes, at least on FanDuel, I've got him projected for 19.2 because Wesley Johnson is not very good at basketball. <laughs> so um, I think that he's going to end up being like sneaky popular as a guy, as a lower salary guy, because Gallo is out and people are just going to funnel him in. Um, he's not good 
and I will not be using Wesley Johnson. Um, I just don't like taking people against the Spurs, even when they're not even particularly like otherworldy. Like I'd love to take Blake tonight because I think it's a good spot for him. I really think it's a great spot for DeAndre. Um, I just don't trust the Spurs. Like it, I just feel as if Pop could have some weird like defensive scheme where they decide to let Austin Rivers beat him and Austin Rivers scores, you know, 30 and they win. I just, there's something about the Spurs that just get into my head where I don't feel confident playing any of their guys or playing people against them. I don't know. I, it's irrational, but it's just sort of where I land. Um, I think DeAndre's in a great spot. I have not looked at his history against the Spurs. I would imagine it's decent if I had to guess, but who knows? <sighs> What's this? What do you need here? 38 for 5x. Yeah, I think I think DeAndre is worth a look. And then if you are really looking for some like filler in the mid tier, I think Lou Williams looks like a decent uh, decent might not even be the best word. He's gonna have opportunities just with Gallo out. He's gonna get, you know, a couple extra minutes and have the opportunity to to gun a couple extra shots. Which we all know Lou Williams loves to do. Um so it's not bad. Uh, he should get pretty close to value just because of volume. But if you get lucky and you catch a game where lose on, then this could be uh, much better for him. All right, Nuggets and Nets. This is the real one. This is probably the best game from a fantasy perspective. Um, probably the one I should have started with. Let's see how much time we got going. God, I ramble. So, the first thing I did when I looked at everything was I saw Nuggets implied total. I took a look at the matchup and thought, cool, I'm firing up Jokic. He was the first person I put in and the first person I started building my lineups around. Um, I ultimately ended up getting off of Jokic because of um, Gortat's matchup, but I still think Jokic is a great, is in a great spot, especially on DK. 8,500, um, I, I think that's a really good look for tonight, especially with Brooklyn coming off the back-to-back, -back. um, Denver at a home game, Brooklyn coming all the way to Denver. I'd be worried about a blowout because this is just a real bad spot for Brooklyn but there are so many pieces of this Brooklyn team that I like for tonight right now I have Moutier in which is not a sentence that I would have expected to say um, at the beginning of this year he's been getting more burn 27 minutes 25 minutes 32 minutes I'm only projecting him for 24 right now because I wanted to show how muted his stats could be um, he only needs 24 to hit 5x. He's at 4,800 on FanDuel. And he put up 31.5 in his last one out. Even this game where he only played 25 minutes, put up 22.6. Like, he's just under value there. Um, but I think that his minutes could probably end up being a bit higher than 24, which if that's the case, I think this is going to have a really, really good shot of coming in over value. And uh, he should be in a really good spot to, I mean, I can see 30 for him um, at less than 5,000 salary, which is just awesome. Um, I don't know how much I trust the numbers on Fantasy Labs for their matchups and their, um, their correlation numbers. But there was one thing I saw when I was looking at, you know, how I liked Moutier, I liked Millsap, which is where this is leading, and I liked Jokic, and I wanted to see sort of the relationship between those guys. So at Fantasy Labs, you can take a look at correlation numbers, and I guess I'll pull that up since I'm here. Um, I try to look at this stuff pretty regularly, 
but I don't use it as like full on information, you know, where I just disregard everything else for it. But if I filter this out and use everything from last October, obviously the Millsap numbers uh, should be taken with a little bit more of a grain of salt because he has not played as many games as, you know, sort of the Moutier and Jokic group. But if I look at Moutier on his correlations tab, um, he's got some pretty good correlation with Jokic. He's got some pretty good correlation with Millsap. Looks good to me. So I once I dropped off of Jokic and was on to Moutier, um, I took a look at this to see if I can get Moutier and Millsap and if that would be a good look. Now this is only 10 games, so it's hard to like really rely on it, but it's a pretty high positive number. So it doesn't make me feel bad about putting two of those guys in. So I guess what I'm saying is if you wanted to get two guys out of this Denver matchup, um, I think that using Moutier and one of the bigs, whether it's Millsap or Jokic, would be a really good spot. I think they both play into each other's hands. If you just check out Jokic quickly, um, he's very highly correlated with Millsap. Again, I don't know how much I trust uh, what I'm seeing here and whether I should even be relying on it. But I do like to... Sl like if it was... If I was going to roster Jokic and I was like, okay, I really like Millsap. And I came here and I saw that Millsap had Fareed's correlation. It would give me pause. It wouldn't necessarily talk me out of that scenario, but I would want to see if there was another option at that point. Um, and that's sort of the way I feel about the positive side. It's not just a, okay, let's lock it down. This is exactly where I want to be. It's more of a, okay, I liked him before independently of it all. This is just another data point in that direction. So in this case, I think uh, any combination of Moutier, Millsap, and Jokic is great. And um, I will say very specifically, and this will probably come back to bite me now since I'm saying it, I'm avoiding Wilson Chandler full stop at this point. He's playing like garbage. Um, he's putting up stat lines like 8.5 or 16 in 36 minutes. He put up 3.7. Just, it's not worth it, especially on a 10 game slate. It's just not worth it. Um, I don't trust him to be a good basketball player any longer. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just because he's like the 15th option on the team, but he doesn't seem to be responding well to it. Let's hop to Brooklyn quickly. Now, this is going to be a tricky one. Um, just because it's a, it's not a great back-to-back -back for them. Um, Russell had another huge game, which is interesting because yesterday he was $8,000 on FanDuel. Now he's dropping to 73. That's a $700 drop on a guy that put up 46 last night. It feels trappy to me. Um, I have him in my lineup as of right now because he's 7,300 and he only needs to hit 36 and a half to hit 5x. But something feels fishy they're playing a back-to-back -back. they're going to denver altitude this screams a situation where marks changes up his minutes russell plays 22 minutes he puts up 14 fantasy points or something he shoots three of 16 from the field and everybody loses their mind on social media I'm going to end up with him because I can't pass up a sale, but be aware, there are some major signs that that's a negative for tonight. Or I'm crazy. That, that's also possible. Uh, whatever. Um, other than that, I think Rondé Hollis Jefferson um, may end up playing. I don't have him in now, but it doesn't really change anything for me. Um, I had him last night. Thanks for the 6.4, buddy. Really appreciate it. Um, there's just there's no way to shake out some of these minutes. The guys that are going to get the minutes, guys like Damari Carroll, 
not really guys you feel awesome about rostering to begin with. It's the days where Joe, Har- Joe Harris gets 25 minutes or, you know, who else? Like Quincy Ace, he got 21 last night, and I didn't really see that one coming. Um, you know, Dinwiddie gets 27 after the night before playing, for a couple nights before playing 15. I just... You're throwing darts when you're picking guys on Brooklyn right now, outside of Russell, who's the one that's actually performing well. But, man, that feels like a tricky, tricky spot. I'm going to have them, but I'm not going to be happy about it. Jazz and Sixers. Okay, I know everybody sees Embiid is out. Fire up. Go Bear, because who the hell is going to stop him? And I get it. I don't love it. I, I, I don't really love it. It's not as if Rudy Gobert is some Hakeem Olajuwon post-wonder where now he's just going to eat whoever the hell they're slapping on him down on the low blocks. Like That's, that's not the way that basketball play is played any longer. He's not some offensive force. If I check my stats, where do we have him? So... Um, on a per possession basis, Gobert scores 0.57 FanDuel points on a possession. Um, the percentage of that based on scoring, so just on twos, threes, and free throws, um, is on average 50% across the league. Gobert scores 34% of his fantasy points from just scoring. So, for me, I don't see Embiid being a gigantic bonus for him because he's not someone that is going to be taking advantage as much from an offensive perspective. Now, granted, he could be the role man on like 10 dunks tonight because Embiid's not in there. But for me... I don't think that he gains from this situation as much as someone else might that is more offensive. Like DeMarcus Cousins, for example. He might even be, that might be too high. What would be a good example of an offensive center? It would be like around Embiid or around um, Gobert. So like, okay, Marcus Gasol is probably a better example. So Marc Gasol scores 49% of his fantasy points from points themselves. I think Marc Gasol would be in a much better situation to capitalize on Joel Embiid being out than Rudy Gobert. It doesn't mean Rudy Gobert is not a good play for tonight, because he is. I mean, it's they're playing the Sixers, and the Sixers' best defensive player is out. It He's, he's in a better situation, for sure. But... I don't think that he is the type of person to benefit from it as much. It's a low total game. You know, the Jazz are 105.75. Like, it's fine. They're in the mid-tier. You know, the Sixers are at 99.25. I I think there are better options out there. And I don't see the gains as much. He's only put up, he put up 20 in his last one out, 28. He needs to get to 40 to hit 5x, which he's done twice this year. So, if you feel really confident about Rudy Gobert, I get it. Go for it. Um, I'm going to avoid it. I don't I don't really like it. What I do like, Rodney Hood. 4,300 on FanDuel. Um, look. His actual performance, not going to be the place where uh, he seems like a good play. He's been playing like crap. Um, Lots of not good games. He's in a good spot. Um, If I needed to end up with one guy from Utah, it would probably be Hood. Um, Just because of his salary, it's a good spot for for that sort of salary. Um, 4300 is a pretty good bargain. Other than that, I don't need any part of this. I don't think that I need anything from Philly either. Um, I'm just going to poke to it really quick just to make sure I'm 
not forgetting anything. Okay, so I, I think Covington's in a pretty good spot. Um, he should play pretty solid minutes, and he's been he's been really good this year. Um, if you want to run out Saric on FanDuel thirty eight hundred, I get it. You know there are minutes to go around tonight, um, but with their low implied total, try to avoid getting a bunch of pieces of this. It's just not the spot. It, it really isn't. Um, Blazers and Grizzlies, let's touch on that quickly. I don't really have anything to say on the Grizz, um, but for the Blazers, I think CJ McCollum is a really realistic, realistic play. Um, Right now, I've got Russell and Oladipo in there, so he's not there for me. But I can see, I can see stepping down off of maybe maybe Oladipo if I needed to move up five hundred dollars somewhere else, whether that's Barnes or Marketing or if some news comes out and we can fill in some three thousand guy, um, it, it might open up some other moves. I don't love the idea of Dame here, um, but I don't. It's fine. Other than that, I'm not touching Turner or Harkless or any of these guys, and I don't want any part of uh, Nurkic at 8,300, um, especially against the Grizzlies. This is a low total, 102.75. So the Blazers are the lowest totaled favorite. Um, and the Grizzlies are, you know, not much behind them there. It's just not, it's, it's not a sexy game. I don't have anything to say about the Grizzlies. They don't have, there's no news that are, that's going to make that interesting. Um, and then Kings and Thunder. Kings are the second worst team for tonight. George Hill is supposed to be back. Who cares? It's George Hill. For some reason, he's an absolute train wreck this year. So for OKC, I love Res, uh, Russell Westbrook for tonight. Um, I know that he's expensive, 10000 I do have him in my lineup right now. And he hasn't been amazing um, this year even. But the Kings are a turnstile. And George Hill has looked old and slow. And I feel like Westbrook is going to have a real crazy night. And they're just they're going to blow their doors off. Um, so right now I'm on Westbrook pretty hard um he's the highest salaried guy i have right now i have a feeling when i when i go to explore this a little later that i will make adjustments that add another one of the bigger tier guys probably <clears throat> uh, excuse me uh, probably either braun or Giannis, depending on where i can get the salary from so i would probably end up with westbrook and one of those two big small forwards um I'd say the only part that I wouldn't expect to change at all would be Gortat. That's where I'm at right now. Um, and I don't really see... I don't see me getting off of Gortat unless there's some really weird news that comes out. So with that said, that's everything I've got for you guys today. Um, as usual, like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribing would be great. Not that I'm trying to beg, but you got to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube before you have the ability to start monetizing um, uh, your YouTube channel. So 10% of the way there. I really appreciate everybody that's been able to like and subscribe so far. I'm really going to try to do these as much as I can. Um, I want to try to make out a schedule where I can get these out as quick as I possibly can. Um, whether that's recording them the night before and getting them posted in the morning or, you know, just getting up at the ass crack of dawn and just making sure that I churn them out. On days like yesterday when it's only three games, it's not so bad, but it's hard to summarize 10 games worth of thoughts without, you know, putting out really long content. Um, so if anybody ever has any thoughts, things that they want to see, um, feel free to let me know in the comments, hit me up on Twitter. Um, as always, I have the link to my projection sheet um, in the notes or in the comments section of the of this particular episode and um, I usually do two updates if I can for anybody that's just seeing this for the first time uh, the first update in the morning um, 
I'm, I'm a pretty early bird. I'm on the East Coast. I'm usually up by like 5.30 or so. So my first update usually hits in like the 6 to 6.30 range. And then I try to get at least one refresh of the minutes um, somewhere in the like 90 minutes or so before lock. Um, from there on, if there's any news, my recommendation is to do file, save a copy. And you can then um, make any minutes adjustments yourself. If somebody gets scratched, you can pull them out, give those minutes to somebody else if you want. If you're not even comfortable changing the minutes, you don't have to, but you could take that guy out. The whole sheet will recalculate, spit out new projections. Um, it, it's all set up and ready for you to do that if you need to make changes for yourself. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got. Oh, um, just in case for anybody that uh, checked out my video from yesterday, um, I got clobbered on FanDuel. Um, I was like 10 points shy of the cut line in double ups. Um, I ended up with Horford, which was great. I ended up with Durant, which was great. I ended up with D'Angelo Russell, which was great. Every single other piece of my lineup was a dumpster fire. I had the Tylers at point guard. Tyler Johnson was atrocious. Tyler Eulis was atrocious. I had Rondé Hollis Jefferson who went out at halftime. Not very good. I did make a pivot. Um, my placeholder lineup that I had in was my lineup until like 6.30, maybe quarter to 7. Um, I was in the DFS Discord chat talking to a few people and ended up moving off of Jalen Brown and Bender, and I switched that to Josh Richardson and John Collins. And I was okay with that because I thought Collins was going to have um, pretty high ownership. I was leaving $1,400 on the table at that point. So I thought by making my lineup a little bit more chalky, um, I thought that would probably be better. I was probably differentiating a little too much prior to that. Uh, some of the guys that I was talking to preferred the the Richardson and Collins combo to the Brown and um, Bender combo. Um, ultimately, it didn't matter because all of those guys were uh, utter dog shit. So <laughs> it didn't really make much of a difference who I was rostering. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I assume anybody that played yesterday knows it was a really low scoring night. I think I finished with like 215 and something. So I was, you know, just short of like a 225 cut line. But I took it on the chin. But that's what happens. Um, you know, you don't win every night. Um, I play predominantly cash games. So, you know, sometimes it's a great night and the money doubles and triples and quadruples up. And then sometimes it's a, you just take a bath because, you know, you're below that line. You just got to win more than you lose. That's all you can do. And tonight, I expect to win more than I lose um, because I can't lose more than I did yesterday. So with that said, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit me up with questions, whatever you need, and I will see you guys again tomorrow.